inflection point. That is how one U.S. official described today's phone call between President Biden and Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu. According to a White House readout of the call, Biden pushed for, quote, an immediate ceasefire and for the first time ever suggested that the U.S. may condition its aid to Israel unless Netanyahu implements a series of specific, concrete and measurable steps to address the protection of civilians in Gaza. The president also labeled Israel's recent killing of seven aid workers from World Central Kitchen as unacceptable. And tonight, there appears to have been some movement. The White House says that Netanyahu has agreed to open new paths for humanitarian aid into Gaza, quote, at the president's request. Joining me now is Dan Pfeiffer, former White House communications director for President Obama and co-host of Pod Save America. Dan, thank you for being here. Um, what do you make of the readout of this call and I guess what we'll call one of the results of it, which is the opening of this aid corridor? I think the, the, the language inflection point is exactly right. This is a represents a potential real change in how the president plans to use his leverage against Prime Minister, his leverage with President Prime Minister Netanyahu to get Israel to change how it's handling civilian casualties in Gaza and aid for the people in Gaza. And the proof will be in the pudding. Will Israel actually follow through on this? And if they don't, will the president be willing to condition aid going forward or condition the use of weapons going forward? And so, but I think that tonight was a very important moment and he delivered results. And so that's a very good thing. I, I guess I wonder, you know, we get these, these sort of leaks or reporting that Biden is infuriated with Netanyahu and that's unacceptable and he wants an immediate ceasefire, et cetera. And that's not unimportant and not, it is significant, of course, in, in terms of the, the broader posture. But then there's reporting that on the same day that seven world uh, central kitchen workers are killed, the White House approves the transfer of thousands of more bombs to Israel. Granted, that was approved by Congress earlier, but I mean, how does that under how much does that undercut Biden's position, his message, and how should they be handling those two clashing realities? I think today's the shift in rhetoric today and the shift in actually saying if you do not do a better job, then we are going to reassess how we're helping you, is the result of, the, of a I think a very real uh, and challenging political position for the president, where he was saying things, expressing oftentimes in background leaks from White House aides, his anger and frustration. And then Prime Minister Netanyahu is sticking his thumb repeatedly in the president of the United States' eye. And that made the president, I think, look ineffective in the eyes of the public. It was very frustrating to people within his own party who have a good faith disagreement with his policy approach here. And so I, what my real hope is that this represents an, a change in policy, mm. and, because this is ultimately not a messaging problem. It's not that the president wasn't saying the right things. Could he have said better things? Absolutely. But it was a policy problem. The decision that the president made that sticking close to Netanyahu would give him the best ability to influence how Israel conducted the war was not, I think, proceeding as they had hoped, and that Israel was not being at was not doing what the White House wanted them to do. And so there was a shift. And I think if this if what today's phone call represents an actual change in U.S. policy, a change in approach, that's a very positive thing substantively and politically for the president. Well, yeah. And let's talk about the politics, because as, I mean, I agree with you that I think that this was driven by policy and probably Biden's own instincts about what to do on yep. this. But he has borne a political cost for it among young yep. people, voters of color. Mm. What you know, as a political strategist, what what has been the constituency that Biden has been concerned about, you know, up until the point of taking a more aggressive stance with Netanyahu? Is it independent swing voters? Is it moderate Republicans, Nikki Haley voters who he wants to entreat to his side of the aisle? I mean, what do you see as a political calculation thus far up until I, tonight? I honestly don't think it was a political calculation because it was bad politics domestically mm -hmm. on every dimension. I think it was an actual legitimate decision the president made because he believed this was the best way to influence Israel's conduct. Because there, he is getting hammered from the right, he's getting hammered from the left, that he is looking, he was looking uh, less effective than he would like in the eyes of the folks in the middle. And so this is, you see, I, as a domestic political person in a White House dealing with national security issues, this is a frustration I felt all the time, is the policy decided on by the president, influenced by his non-political national security advisors, often put, were based on what they believe was in the best interest of the 
of the United States globally and global security and homeland security and all of those things, but we're often really bad politics. So I really don't believe the president's position here was because he was appealing to these voters over these voters, picking voters on the right over the left. I think it's what he thought was the best, and there were political consequences to be paid. I think what I now think his conclusion is the policy is not working as he would want, so he's changing policy. The change in policy, I think, will be better politics, but it's a policy decision being made here. As, as Biden grapples with this in a very substantive and head-on fashion, I just want to remind everybody that Donald Trump is out there saying, as it pertains to the conflict in Gaza, get it over with. That's the degree of detail he is offering the American public as he runs for office for a third time. Dan Pfeiffer, my friend, thank you for uh, talking about this very complicated topic with me. Really appreciate it. Oh, it's great to be with you, Alex. Hey everyone, MSNBC has a new and improved app. You'll get real-time alerts and analysis, live blogs, in-depth essays, video highlights, and the best 2024 election coverage. Download the new MSNBC app. Here's how to do it. You tap on the App Store on your phone. You hit search on the bottom right corner. You type in MSNBC. You click on the MSNBC app. You click on get or the cloud icon and enjoy it.